How's everybody doing today? Amen. How's everybody doing today? Amen. Glory to his name. Amen. I hope those claps are just a walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Can we give God a quick hand clap of praise? Because ain't he worthy to be praised? Amen. All the hell we've been through this week, yet he's still worthy. Amen. If the enemy had his way, he would have taken us out. Amen. I don't need no rocks to cry out for me today. Amen. He is worthy to be praised in this place. Amen. Will you stand with me? Ain't God worthy? Amen. Sicknesses have tried to come and knock on this door, knock on that door, but I'm so glad. So glad it missed my doorstep, amen? Amen, death is knocking on people's doors, but I'm so thankful, so thankful it missed my doorstep, amen? I'm just excited, amen, to see what God is gonna do in this place. I, I feel a stirring in my spirit this morning. I don't know what it is, but, but I'm so excited because the people of God have come today not to see about a man, but to come and see about the man, amen? Amen. I'm excited because I don't see any oppression or depression across the room. I'm excited because I don't see any sicknesses across the room. But I'm excited even more because I look out and I see that you understand that if you need something from God today, that all you have to do is open your mouth and say, God, will you please step in and help me? Amen. The verse of scripture for this morning comes from Psalms 34 and it reads this. I will bless the Lord at all times. I want to say that one more time. It says, verse 34, verse 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. Cry out today, whatever you need from God. I'm so excited. Amen. And I, and I know that many of you have come to church looking for church as usual. Amen. Waiting for a message to be preached. Waiting for this to be done before, before you can get your shout on. Waiting for somebody to excite you before you can press into the things of God. But how many of you know that right now, if you need something from God, will you stretch out your hand and say, God, I'm standing in the need of a blessing. God, I'm standing in the need of a miracle. God, I'm standing it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of a prayer. That old song said, it's not my mother nor my father, but it's me, oh God, standing in the need of a prayer. Oh God, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you, oh God, for being the God of all gods. Father, we bless your name today. God, for doing everything except failing in our lives. Father, first and foremost, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for giving us our right minds this morning. Thank you for road mercies this morning. Thank you, oh God, that sicknesses miss us this morning. Father, we come now asking that your Holy Spirit will rest in this place. Holy Spirit, that you would come and saturate this atmosphere. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come and rain in your miracles and your blessings. I pray the atmosphere will be so saturated that signs and wonders will flow out of this place today. Father, we declare and we decree right now that the dead will get up again in this place. Those spirits who have been suppressed and compressed, oh God, that today there will be a releasing in the atmosphere. Father, we declare and we decree into the atmosphere today that if somebody came in with a pain on their back, oh God, or a pain in their body, oh God, that the atmosphere will be so saturated that a healing will fall in their lap. Father, we declare and we decree today that families will begin to come together again. We declare and we decree today, God, that our children will come back off the street. Father, we declare and we decree, Father, that marriages will line back up with your will, line back up with your way. Father, we declare and we decree that the doors of the church will fall open again and that we will not judge when they walk back in, but God, that we will love unconditionally, God, the way that you commanded us to, oh God. Father, we declare and decree that your Holy Spirit will run through this place like a mighty roaring lion. Father, we declare and we decree the crooked will be made straight today. We declare and we decree that your Holy Spirit will reign in this place. Father, we love you, we praise you, we bless you. 
Father, we exalt you in this place. You are so worthy. Hallelujah to your name, God. Hallelujah to your name, God. Hallelujah to your name, God. Holy Spirit, saturate this place. Saturate this place. God, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We thank you for hearing our prayers. We glorify you in it. God, we give this service back to you now. Whatever you want to happen today, God, you do it. We get out of the way. We remove all flesh. We remove anything that's not of you. Father, we speak to the enemy now. We curse him to his face. We let him know that it's time to go and to take his hands off of God's people. We're here serving in his papers now to get up and to go. Holy Spirit, take over this place. Take over this place. This branch of Zion belongs to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's people, come on and say amen. Amen. Don't you feel better? Let's try this worship exercise again. Can we give God a hand clap of praise? Don't you feel a little bit freer in the spirit realm? Don't you feel a little bit better? Like all the cares of the world, they can wait. But just for a few moments, we're coming into the presence of God. Amen. This is the season. This is the reason for the season. Amen. It's not all the presence you will get under the tree, but it's getting into his presence. That's what it counts. Amen. Amen. Let's get ready for some worship.
Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
service where we tap into some intercessory prayer. Um, I'll leave it up to you today. You feel it? Amen. Amen. Everybody should come up to me too. We just believe in bombarding the doors of heaven. Amen. On, on the behalf of those who were in need, uh, for those things that are seen and those things that are not seen. This is one of my intercessory prayer warriors um, that God has planted in this ministry. And we just believe that through our prayer requests, through, through our humbleness and through our boldness, that, you know, God said we can come boldly to his throne um, and ask. And I believe if we ask God that he'll be just to forgive us and he'll be just to hear us. Um, and so I just believe that this is a very important time in the service. So I want to encourage you that if you want to tap in and pray with us, please tap in and pray with us. Because the Bible does say that two or three will come together and ask any one thing in his name that he would be in the midst. Amen. So I just certainly believe in my spirit that if I see 40 people sitting out here, that certainly the doors of heaven have got to be shaking. I believe in my spirit that 40 of us are praying at the same time. There has got to be a God who is listening to Father's Tabernacle on this Sunday. Amen. So whatever's going on, if you guys will call it just to cease for just a few minutes, we tap into some intercessory prayer. Amen. And help us pray. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Stand in this pit, in this pit, in his presence. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. I'm tongue-tied, God. And I stand in awe of you, God. Oh, God. The worship was sweet this morning, God. Oh, God. That you would smile on us. As you smiled on the little drummer boy who came with nothing but his town. Oh, God, there is nothing in us, nothing that we can do, nothing that we can say to earn that salvation that you gave to your son. Do that precious baby who came in the humble form of a baby. Oh, God, that you loved us long ago and you started that plan. Oh, Jesus, thank you, God for that salvation, so pure and simple, not complicated, but just to reach out and to touch you and to believe that your son saves us from our sins, that he's our savior, he's our deliverer, he's our high tower, he's our prince of peace. God, I thank you for the spirit of peace that reigns in this place. Thank you, God. God. It was such an awesome night. God, I pray that when we get to heaven, that we'll see all those wondrous sights, God, firsthand, like the shepherds, those humble shepherds. God, you chose to reveal yourself to the, to the plain folk, the simple people, not to the kings. You hid yourself from them. Oh, God, but you reveal yourself to those who can have a heart after you, God. So, God, I pray that you would just touch hearts in this place, God. God, that our hearts would be facing to you, God. That we would be quick to believe, God, as the shepherds did. That we would be quick to raise our hands in adoration to the sky, to the host of heavenly angels who declare that a king was born. Our king, our prince of peace. Oh, God, move and minister, God, in this season, God. Oh, God, slow things down for us, God, that we can soak in your presence, saturate ourselves in your presence, jump into your word, God, to see what it is that you want to say in this season. God, help us to be a light in our families, God. Move and minister, God. God, those that are hurting in their hearts, that their bodies are afflicted, God. God, I pray that you would just reach down and touch and heal. We stand in agreement as a body of believers that that healing is available because of the stripes you bore on your back. God, touch and heal, move and minister. Let every heart in this place be touched, God. Tenderize our hearts, God, to receive the word, God, that you have for us today. Spirit of God, go before us, God. Anoint the speaker, God. 
praise you, praise you, praise you, God. God, help us to bring our best gifts to you, God. Our best worship, God. Oh, God, it's only through you, God. You are worthy, God. We do lift up your name. We magnify your name. Holy, 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 holy is the Lamb of God. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Oh, God, we do celebrate this season. It's not about the gifts. It's not about the presence, but your presence. And we just seek your presence, God, more than anything. God, reign in this place. Touch words, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. God, thank you for the scriptures, God. I let them just use it in their day, everyday lives, God. Not just 
help them, God, and grow in God, and not only within them, God, but in their families, God. And just thank you for everything that you're doing, God, in the season of giving, God. If you've given your son, God, now we're giving back to you, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Um, just real quick, guys, as we prepare for our times of offering, um, my wife said something that was uh, very, very key. Uh, she said two things that were very key. First off, um, please don't leave today. Um, we want everybody to stay after and just to enjoy each other. People think that sometimes coming to church and getting a word is, is all it is to, to God. But fellowship is an amazing time to spend with um, God at the house of Holy Faith. And so we want you guys to stay and hang out with us. Um, you know, just for a minute, get a plate, just so everybody love more something, just hang out with us. Um, and then the other thing is New Year's Eve. I don't know, I'm just really feeling um, something amazing going to happen. Um, I've invited some awesome friends of mine. Um, Prophet Willie, I believe, will be in the house. Um, and I've also invited Apostle Fred Mills. Um, so I believe maybe he will be here as well. Um, so I'm just expecting some awesome, awesome moves of God to happen in this house on our New Year's Eve. So go tell one, tell everybody that we have in church on New Year's Eve. All right, bless God with your tithes and offering. Amen. Glory to his name. How's everybody doing tonight, today? Hey man, I'm so excited. Man. I don't know uh, <laughs> who we're gonna preach today, but we're gonna preach something because uh, God is worthy. And I was just trying to encourage myself just a second because I was talking to Pastor Anthony and said, you know, the word he says he hides deep on the inside. So, hey man, we'll see what's birthed today. But we're gonna come out of Revelations four um, eleven, I believe. Revelation is 4 and 11. I'm going to spend a few minutes just talking with you guys. And, and um, I believe today is going to be a day of sharing my heart. We'll see what God says. Um, have you ever felt just left out or inadequate? Or you ever felt like everything you're doing just wasn't worth what you're going through? Um, I want to tell you guys, just keep it up for a few minutes. I want to. Just share just very briefly my awesome experience from last weekend. Because it was an eye opener to me. Um, and, I, and I believe that oftentimes we, we miss the mark. Last weekend, you know, I had the privilege of, of, of turning, you know, Father Sabernacle over to Pastor Anthony while I went out um, on assignment. And I found myself, you know, sometimes I ask myself, why do I always say yes to stuff? You find yourself in the middle of situations and it's like, why am I saying yes to this? This don't even make sense to me. And, and this is one of those moments where, you know, I had opened my mouth and said yes. And before I knew what I was heading to Charlotte for the weekend, um, to work with the homeless and with people that I don't go to church with, but we're all believers and there's another pastor in the group. And, and we felt like we were on a side. We felt like it was the right thing to be doing. And, and God was uh, surely had his hand in it. But it was just that thing in the back of my mind all the way there. I was like, Lord, why am I in this car? I got a church back home. I can, I can be happy at home and preach and be happy. I can go back home when church is over. And, uh, but there was a, a teaching moment in that. Friday night, we partnered with the church. And we went out and we fed the homeless. In Uptown Charlotte. I don't know if you've ever been to Charlotte, but Uptown Charlotte is a crazy, crazy place. And we spent time at 7.30 praying for what we were about to go out and do. We spent some time, we spent about 30 minutes in intercessory prayer. And honestly, typically 90% of the time, your pastor packs. But I decided I wasn't going to pack this night. I decided, and you guys know what I'm talking about. I decided I wasn't going to pack. I just felt the presence of God. I was good. And so we went out and we ministered to people. We spent time just getting to know the homeless people and feeding them. And it was like through that, God was saying, there are three types of people in this world. We were able to witness the homeless, those who wanted to help the homeless, and those that ignored the homeless. All on one street. And so Saturday, we went back out and did much of the same. There was a Charlotte Hornets basketball game going on. And that night I decided to pack because there was a lot of craziness going on out there and I just wanted to come back home safely. On Sunday morning, not to go back Saturday night, 
on Saturday night, and this is where I'm going with our story before we start preaching, is this. We went to the store and we bought roughly about 50 sandwiches and we had backpacks of just all kinds of toiletries and goodies to take with us. And we went into the street and we would give to people who we saw were obvious homeless. And we would say, hey, I've got a sandwich tonight, would you like it? If they had already eaten, they would say, no, give it to my friend. But if they would, were hungry, they would take it. <coughs> the night before we met this guy who was his birthday, and we wish we had knew it was his birthday. So we said, okay, when we were out shopping, we went and grabbed cupcakes for this guy. Surely he's going back out on the street tonight. We're going to give him some cupcakes tonight. So we're going through the town. We're going through the city looking for this guy and can't find him. We found everybody else from the night before except him. Well, in the course of all the things we were toting, the cupcakes got ruined. The cupcakes were smashed. And so we sat on the bench for a minute. We looked at everything we had left. We had one more street to hit. And we saw these ruined cupcakes. And I said, we can't find this guy. Let's just throw them away. So I went and I put them on top of the trash can. And we grabbed our bags. And we said, OK, Lord, we have about 15 more things. Let's pray real quick before we head out. Or who else we're going to service tonight? So the four of us circled up. And we began to pray. And at the conclusion of that prayer, I don't know which one it was in the service. said, look, y'all. Look over there. This lady who had to have been about 70 or 80 years old has got back and she's running as hard as she can to those cupcakes. And she grabs those cupcakes and she said, are you guys done with these? We said, yes ma'am, they're yours. They're yours. We thought it was trash. We thought it was worthless. But to her, it was a bag of gold. And through that, the message that God wanted me to deliver, I believe, is this. <clears throat> Those very things that the world sees worthless, because, because of our past, because of the things we've been through, oh, we can never amount to anything. Because our families have always never amount to anything. We, we might as well just find ourselves sitting by that trash can where those box of cupcakes were. I'm so glad that when God saw me sitting by that trash can, that he saw something inside of me that said, no, baby, I see that as pure gold. I see that for what it's going to be. So in the middle of us with 15 things on our back, getting ready to walk, the two ladies in the group began to cry. And they said, look at her. She grabbed those cupcakes and she sat down and she ate and made sure there wasn't a crumb left. And yet we sometimes walk over things that just seem inadequate. Sometimes that child who we try to train up in the way they should go, that child decides to get strung out on drugs and we say, well, I'll just pray for them and I'm going to leave them out there. I'm so glad that in this season we can celebrate a Savior was born. And he had more responsibilities than just being that child that was born. He was the savior of the world. And not only the savior of the world, but he was the savior that said, that same child that everybody wants to forget about, that's on the side of the road, that's on the side dealing drugs and doing things, that same daughter who's on the street selling her body, that same one who finds himself homeless, he died for them. He was born that he would take all of their inadequate, all of their inadequate measures, all of the things that were not right with them. He would take it back to the cross with him. I look at those cupcakes. Those cupcakes were designed to be pretty, to taste good, and to look good. But once it, lo once it lost its prettiness, I'm guilty of throwing it to the side. But God said, no, no, just because you might have lost your fire, just because you might have let a little dust get on your fire, just because you might have let a little bit of tainting get on your anointing, I've not changed the purpose that I designed you for.
I was reading a post on Facebook last night from one of my dear friends that had said, you put a potato in a pot of water and it softens it. But if you take that potato out of that water and you place an egg in that same water, it hardens it. How can that be? It's not the surroundings, but it's what it's made of. That cupcake had a substance that would fill the void of being hungry. It's not because the cupcakes were smashed that gave it any worth. It was the fact that when the baker was in the kitchen, the baker took the time to add each ingredient to make sure that whoever got this cupcake, whoever drew from this cupcake, would find that it had a lot of flavor and taste. God designed, when he made you, when God put you in that oven to orchestrate and to build you, it doesn't matter if you came out a little burnt. It doesn't matter if you came out a little bit cocked to the side. It doesn't matter if, if you put yourself back in the oven to find a little bit of tart and a little bit of tape on you. God took time to carefully place the ingredients that would make sure the anointing that was on your life, that when somebody came to you and drew from you, that it would not return void. That when I was able to draw from the master, I drew from the vine called life. People of God, you might say, well, this is not the Christmas message you were coming looking for. What better message to deliver to the body of Christ that in your worthlessness God found worth. Through your raw state God said I'm going to take every lump, every bruise, every mistake, every time you fell and scraped your knees I'm going to take every scar I'm going to roll it and I'm going to put it in a pot. I'm going to mix it up and out of that will be your testimony that's left behind but I Whatever comes out of this pot is going to be something that will serve me. And not only serve me, but serve my people. God created you with a two-edged sword to serve him and to serve God's people. To serve him and to serve God's people. Revelations 4 and 11, it reads this. You are worthy, O Lord and God, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things. And by your will, they were created and have their being. In your worthless state, tossed to the side, tossed to and fro, God said, I created you not to be worth less. I created that situation not to be worth less, but to have worth. So ask yourself, are you being the worth that God called you to be? Are you being valued at the price that God paid for you? Well, what did God pay for me? He paid with his blood. He went up on that cross. See the Christmas story, yes, a savior was born in Bethlehem. Yes, he was born. I asked a question on Thursday night to our youth group. What did Jesus do? They said, well, he died for us. Yes, but what did he do before he died? Somebody said he helps others. Yes, how did he help others? He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He calls the lame to walk. 
One of the most fascinating stories the kids found was he fed 5,000. 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. And none stopped there and said he had 12 baskets of food left over. They said, our Jesus did that? He did that and then so. People of God, I want to encourage you this. We all have flaws. We all have error. We all make mistakes. I had the kids do this. If you've ever told a lie in your entire life, if you ever told just one lie, raise your hand. Put your hand down. If you've ever made a mistake, if you've ever made just one mistake in your whole life, lift your other hand. And you look around the room and now one hand is down. The kid said, oh. Just like you just did, oh. But the greatest thing about God was this. He paid that price. He paid that price. That's why we can celebrate this season. If he was not born, oh, good God Almighty, where would we be? Lost and undone. A wretch undone. But because of his grace and mercy, when he was born, so was grace and so was mercy. You can rest in knowing this. It might seem like you're living in the midst of chaos. It might seem like you're still in the developmental stage of that cupcake where all the ingredients are being mixed together. It may seem like you're there, and that's okay. The important thing is not staying there. Because ingredients that just stay in a mixing bowl, eventually they get sour or they get rotted, and eventually mold gets on it. Pick up your pants. Pick up where you left off. You've got your marching orders. Walk inside the oven and let him perfect you. Let him perfect you. This is the season where he gave us the greatest gift. The greatest gift was his son. And because his son came, we can have salvation. Of all the lines you will ever stand in this holiday season, and many of you, I can look at your faces and tell that you went and stood in those long lines on Black Friday. <laughs> Some of y'all said, well, I didn't have time for that, so I used Cyber Monday instead. <laughs> look at them hands, boy, you'll do those things. But of all the lines you will ever stand in, of all the money that has ever been spent, Salvation is the one thing that you don't have to get in line for. Thank you, Jesus. And even if your credit is bad, you can still go to the throne of the master. Thank you. God, I don't, silver and gold have I none. Right. But all I have, Jesus, I give it to you. Right. I come boldly to the throne. Father, a wreck undone. But God, with all that I am, today I ask that you take me into your loving arms. And if you would say that one thing, your credit has just been wiped clean. You've been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed and set free. <laughs> the little buzzer on the oven just went off. And it's time for you to come out. Your people of God. It all started with a cupcake. It all started with a cupcake. God said, I don't care how rough that cupcake looks. I still found worth in it. And the well of life still runs through it. Stand to your feet, people of God. And I still just thought I didn't have a message this morning. Jesus. Can we just worship in that song just for a minute? Y'all don't have to 
to say nothing. This is my story right here. This is my testimony right here. For finding us. 
finding favor with us. We thank you, God, that we found favor in you, Jesus. That you thought we were to die for. When the world wanted to throw us aside, you still saw beauty. You still saw something of use. So, Father, I love you and I praise you. God, I pray for every need across this room. Those known and those unknown, God. Father, I pray that this will be a season of hardness. A season of peace. Which far surpasses any understanding. Father, I still keep hearing children coming off the street. That this will be the season that we will experience miracles, signs, and wonders before our very eyes. I want to keep praying that prayer every week until somebody comes up here and says, my child is back off the street. I will stand on your word, God. I thank you, God, that this word will not return void. I thank you for the fruit that will rest in it. Father, those who will be traveling this week to be with loved ones, place a hedge of protection over their vehicles. Father, I pray that when they embrace their loved ones, that they will find favor over that house. Father, bless them that their cups will run over this season. Father, for those who might still be stressed and trying to make ends meet for this season, won't you send a financial blessing their way? Father, whatever the needs are across this room, meet them in the name of Jesus. Father, we love you, we glorify you, we praise you, and we exalt you for all things. Thank you for hearing our prayers today, Jesus. Now may grace, mercy, truth, and sweet love communion of the Holy Spirit rest about us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all of God's people says, Amen. 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 Bless you guys. Bless you guys. Bless you guys. Guys, please don't leave. Just sit down and enjoy yourself for a little while. I'm going to pull some tables out. Uh, actually, I believe before we go anywhere, the young people, can you knock on that door? She said the, the little guys, they've been working on a series for the last several weeks. And uh, they wanted to sing Happy Birthday Jesus and they got them a cake or something. Um, so we wanted to just take time to make sure we honor that. Training them up. Just training them up. Pastor Anthony did not have a message. When you find yourself not knowing what to do, you do it all. Look at these guys. <laughs> come on up, guys. Let me move this out of here for you. See, I'm going down if you want. Keep coming.
that strain are tied up in the way they should go. That verse will stick with them for years to come. Amen. Let's pray over them. Stretch forth your hand one more time, guys. God, we thank you for these young people. God, we pray that you would put a sparkle, put a shine on their lives. God, I pray the anointing that you rested over their lives. God, that it will be birthed in the years to come. But God, I thank you for the childlike spirit that you place inside of each one of them. Father, that signs and wonders shall follow them all the days of their lives. So God, I speak into their lives that we will see pastors birthed out of this group. That we will see lawyers and doctors and presidents, oh God, birthed out of this group. So Satan, we serve you. Notice that these kids do not belong to you. And you will not get the glory for anything that they will do and accomplish in their lives. In Jesus' holy and righteous name, we love you and praise you. Amen. 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 All right, God.